Good day everyone. So this is Lecture Vlog. Kasama ang inyong lingkod na si Sir Jade. So pag-usapan natin ngayon yung about tourism sector. So ano yung mga different sectors ng tourism and hospitality industry? Actually, uh, there are two major sectors ang tourism. First one is public and the second one is private. When you talk about public, it's all about government and when you talk about private, it's all about business sectors. So, ano yung mga nakapalob doon sa dalawang yun? Yun ang pag-uusapan natin today. So, before that, don't forget to subscribe my channel, Jade Portis, Pulong Barid. So, first, government. When you talk about government, it creates national policy for tourism as an engine of investments, employment growth, and national development. So, sila yung nagpo-provide ng different policy for tourism industry. And then, of course, they are also providing uh, an investment, nag invest ng pera, ng capital for the development of the destination. As well as, they are providing employment, especially sa, isang res sa mga residents ng isang uh, particular destination. They're helping the destination to grow, not only the destination, but also the national uh, national tourism. So, and then, of course, it helps for the national development. So, that's why they uh, they were creating the master plan or the tourism master plan or yung tinatawag na national tourism development plan. And it is uh, led by the Department of Tourism. Pag sinabi mong government in tourism, ang unang lumalabas po sa isipan ng mga natin ay DOT. Department of Tourism, which is ang pinaka-head neto ay isang secretary, secretary of tourism. And then, so they, uh, it is under by the Republic Act 9593 or Tourism Act of 2009 because uh, it was signing by Gloria Macapagal Arroyo uh, in the year 2000. So that's why it's called Tourism Act of 2009. And then, nagkaroon kasi, uh, the, uh, nakapaloob dyan yung Department of Tourism plus its attached agencies. The eight attached agencies, okay, o saan, they're helping the our country's tourism for economic growth, for, uh, for planning and development, as well as to market. And of course, para gumanda yung tourism industry natin here in the Philippines. Okay, so when you talk about secretary or the DOT secretary, okay, siya ang nag-iisip ng economic uh, development for tourism, the economic development cluster. And of course, meron pong, tinat, meron pong itong tourism coordinating council. And then, may mga undersecretaries siya, may mga different undersecretaries such as the tourism regulation, coordination, and resource generation, which is, if you want to uh, if you want to become an accredited DOT, ito yung mag assess sa mga travel agencies, sa mga tour guides, sa mga hotel. So that's accreditation system dito papasok yan. Okay, for tourism development planning, sila po yung nagpa-plan and nagde-develop na destination. So kumbaga, ang bawat region kasi, they're creating their own uh, tourism master plan and then kinokolekta yan ng pinaka-national, the, the main, the head office or uh, under Secretary for Tourism Planning and Development. Okay? And then, of course, they're also, uh, they're also looking for the uh, yung mga resources to make up para magkaroon ng product development. Okay? So, that's, sila yung gumagawa. Ito yung gumagawa talaga ng plano with the approval of the Secretary. Okay? Which is yung National Tourism Development Plan. Okay? And of course, it is, comp and then the under Secretary for Administration. Okay, and then um, when you talk about attached agency, it is composed of TESA, Tourism Promotions Board, na dating Philippine Convention and Visitors Corporation, the Duty Free Philippines Corporation, Philippine Retirement Authority, Nine Filipino Foundation, National Parks Development Committee, Intramuros Administration, and Filipino, uh, sorry, Philippine Commission on Sports and Scuba Diving. 
So, in terms of Tiesa, so they're focusing for the, ito yung sa ano eh, sa mga travel tax, no? Diyan sila, pati yung mga, yung mga different um, uh, tourism enterprise zone, under yan ng Tiesa, okay? So, that will be discussing in the government sector, okay, if it's topic. And then, when you talk about Tourism Promotions Board, when you talk about Tourism Promotions, so they are the one who helping the destination to promote as well as they're promoting the destination to become a convention destination because it was formerly known as Philippine Convention and Visitors Corporation. And then, uh, duty-free Philippines Corporation for the Balikbayan naman, na yung nawalan ano, na makapag-shopping sa duty-free na walang tax. That's... Uh, free uh, tra uh, tax free okay and then philippine retirement authority for those uh, retirement or retired or senior citizen naman po ito okay they are providing yung mga destination for those retired people okay and then nine filipino foundation naman is to promote yung dating na yung filipino na ngayon ay nasa collect pampanga na uh, because when you talk about nine filipino that is considered as the parang mini or little Philippines. So that's why, because of that, napopromote yung Philippines, yung buong Pilipinas, in that, because of that nine Filipino. Or para ma-preserve nila or ma-maintain nila yung mga, yung pinaka-Philippine culture talaga. So yun yung sino-showcase dyan sa nine Filipino. Na dati na dyan sa may, dyan sa may Pasay na nailipat na sa Clark Pampanga. Anyway, and then National Parks Development Committee, so there are also, ano naman to, ito naman yung mga nangangalaga ng mga different national parks especially the Rizal Park the uh, yung tinat yung uh, yung poke ni Mariang Makiling at Paco Park at marami pa pong yung mga different national parks here Intramuros administration focusing naman ito sa Intramuros mismo because that Intramuros yun yung dating Manila we all know that Intramuros it is composed of the different attractions such as yung St. Augustine Church yung Mal uh, Manila Cathedral yung, um, what do you call this, the Casa Manila, uh, Bahay Chinoy. So, they're promoting that yung dating Manila na ngayon, tinatawag ng Within the Walls or Intramuros. And as well as the Philippine Commission on Sports Scuba Diving to promote the Philippines as a best scuba diving destination. So, our DOT Secretary still, Bernadette Romulo Puyat, so actually, sabi ko nga, ito yung natutuwa ko sa mga ginagawang plataforma at uh, mga na-accomplish ni Secretary Romulo Puyat because she was focusing talaga dun sa sustainable tourism. Yun yung, ano eh, yun yung gusto niya mangyari, yung, yung promoting the sustainable tourism development ng our, of our Philippine tourism. Okay? And as well as, ang dami niyang nagawa na, lalo na nung pandemic, ang dami pa rin niya nagagawa okay, in the Department of Tourism. So, magaling na sekretary ito, si DOT, Secretary uh, Bernadette Romulo Puyat. Okay. By the way, uh, she was also, uh, ginamit pa rin yung It's More Fun in the Philippines as our uh, tourism slogan because sa ganda nga ng impact ng It's More Fun in the Philippines. So, uh, nagkaroon lang ng parang uh, yung redesigning of the logo. That's why uh, uh, parang yung pag-ahabi yung logo niya. Tapos yung kanyang, yung name na It's More Fun in the Philippines, yun yung bara-bara na sulat sa mga jeepney. Okay? So, yan. So, that's our secretary. So, siya yung namumuno ngayon in the government sector here in the, especially in tourism. Okay? So, marami siyang collaboration with the, the Department of Transportation as well as the DENR. Okay? for sustaining the uh, for sustaining uh, the different uh, environmental resources here or the our uh, tourist destination okay now let's proceed to the business side or business sector of tourism so papasok po tayo sa travel trade sector pag sinabi mong travel trade sector it is composed of tour operators and travel agency tour operators they are the one who create tour packages for the target market. So, sila yung nagpa-plano, nagde-develop ng tour sa isang destination. And then, they're going to uh, arrange it 
ay pag-usap sila sa mga suppliers doon sa destination na yun para magawa yung pinaka-package to become all-inclusive price, all-inclusive package at ibebenta ito sa pinaka-target market but idadaan ito kay travel agency. So they are considered the wholesaler of the destination. Silang gumagawa ng tour package. Example, I'm from uh, Cebu. Sa Cebu na ito, lahat maraming mga tours dyan. Pwedeng Bantayan Island, pwedeng uh, Oslo Cebu, or pwedeng mismong siyudad doon, yung Cebu City, and then in Mactan. So ngayon, example, I'm the tour operator. I'm going to look at the different attractions there. And then, I'm going to contact yung mga magagandang mga hotel dito and then yung mga restaurants, and then yun, gagawa ko ng itinerary. Papagplanuan ko yung itinerary based on the team na meron dun sa destination ko, and then kung sino yung magiging mga target market ko. Okay? So that's how uh, creating the tour package. So once na, ano yan, nakatapos na yung itinerary, gumagawa, uh, nagko-costing sila kung lahat, magkano lahat ng gastos, kumikita sila through markup, okay? And then after that, they're going to create the quotation and then, pwede na nilang ibenta through Facebook, through social media, and then, or they're going to send it sa mga different uh, travel agency outside of Cebu. That's how tour operator works. Aside from that, hindi pag doon natatapos ang kanilang trabaho. After availing that tour package for those people na nag-avail niyan, once na bumisita na sila doon, dapat mabigay yung servisyo na base doon sa tour package, mabigay ng mga tour operator sa so, papasok dyan si tour guide, si tour escort, and so on, na dapat at the end of the day, yung lahat ng nasa itinerary ay ma-achieve or makamit nung mismong ng mga uh, nag-avail ng tour package na yun. Okay, para ma-satisfied sila. Okay? Masasabi mong maganda ang isang tour package kapag na-satisfied ang mga nag-avail nun or mga bumili or yung turista na bumili nun. Travel agency, so as I said, uh, ang ginagawa naman ni travel agency, uh, yan, si travel agency, they rated the package to prospective tourists. So, nakikipag-agregorishate uh, nakikipag, uh, sila or nakikipag, uh, they have an agreement with the different suppliers and tourism such as hotel, airlines, mice, and uh, lahat ng mga mice, mice sector company, ano pa ba, restaurants, and then sa mga sa DFA, sa mga embassy, sa tour operator lahat 'yan because they're going to sell it sa kanilang ano. Pero hindi 'yan yung ano, package. Yung package na binibenta nila, yung galing sa tour operator. Kung if the if the customers wants wanted to avail, wants to avail the the tour package. So ilalagyan ano lang 'yon. So ibebenta na ng travel agency yun na which is ginawa ni tour operators. They also issuing tickets na galing po sa mismong airline by using their Amadeus. Okay? Or any GDS platform. Okay? Pwede din sila maging license officer because sila din yung tutulong sa'yo para magkaroon ka ng schedule sa DPA. At marami pa pang iba. Basta it's all about travel services na kailangan ng isang kliente. Once na gusto niya mag-travel lahat by documentation or by tours or pwede by flight or sa accommodation kumikita yan. Kumikita ang travel agency through commission. Sa bawat benta niya, may commission siya. Yan ang ginagawa ni travel agency. And then, pasok tayo sa transportation sector naman ng tourism. Transportation sector, it is composed of air, sea, and rail and road uh, transportation. It provides for the transport of tourists to the destination. Or when you talk about transportation, it means to reach a destination and movement at the, des des at the destination. So, yung accessibility muna, number one, you're going to access the destination using any mode of transportation na available para makapunta ka dun sa destination. And, and then, dun sa destination, ano yung at transportation na available dun para ma-reach out mo naman yung mga different places there. Okay? Para makapasyal ka, makapag-shopping ka, and so on. Minsan, yung transportation naging attraction. Like here in the Philippines, yung jeepney, dito yung nagiging unique attraction yan. Because dito, uh, uh, meron yan dito eh. Tayo lang yan, tayo lang ang meron dito. Pero meron naman ding ibang basa na may jeepney. Kumbaga, na ano na rin, na uh, parang, uh, parang inadapt na. Pero tayo talaga nanguna dyan. Sa atin, yan ang pinaka-Philippine symbol natin. 
Okay, so Philippine Airlines, so it is still our flag carrier. So based on the air transportation, this is our flag, uh, flag carrier. Okay, that is considered as the Asia's first airline. Okay, so alam naman natin, pag airline po, there, pag once you ride an airplane, may mga different classes. So pwedeng economy, business class, or first class. Okay, so you can choose. Yan, ito naman talaga yung pinaka-core product talaga ng airline. Ito talaga. Yung upuan mismo. So if you want, dun talaga magbabase yung presyo. Okay? And then Airbus A380, kung pag-usapan naman natin ng airplano po, Airbus A380 is considered the largest airplane in the world. Okay? That the Singapore airline was the first airline na nakapag-avail na ito at nakapag Uh, na, oh, na 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 nagamit niya para sa airline service okay or supply sa flight service okay maybe and then the hypersonic flight is one of the newest one. pero dati pa po ito na under to ng Boeing okay na kung kung si Airbus palaki ito naman pabilisan okay the hypersonic flight so still in the testing ano pa rin naman na sa testing method kasi wala pa namang airline na gumagamit or nagbumibili ng hypersonic airline, uh, hypersonic airplane like something like this. Okay? So maybe in the near future, makakita na tayo ng ganitong, airplane, uh, ganitong aircraft. Uh, in terms of uh, rail transportation, trains a grande bitis or TGB. This is the high speed train in the world in France. Actually, ang Europe meron silang European Railways for the 23 countries as part or as a member of European Union. And one of their train, ito yung TGB ng France. Ito yung high-speed train in the world. Okay? And then, Japanese Shinkansen naman ang kilalang kilala sa Japan na talagang pinaka-famous sa Japan. And then, meron na rin tinatag ng magnetic levitation na pinapaandar ng magnet which is in Japan pa rin. Ayun, katulad niyan. And then in the future maybe the Tel Aviv in Israel they will plan yung tinatag na Skytran parang uh, kakaibang capsule train ito. Okay? So they're still in the planning process pa rin kasi ito yung plano ng Tel Aviv in the near future. Okay? So all the transportation sector It is under the Department of Transportation. So, based on the air, land, and sea travel. Okay? So, at uh, doon, doon yung attach agency ng Department of Transportation. Uh, based on the aviation, sa roads, sa railway, and maritime. Okay? So, the Department of Transportation, which is ang secretary niyan, si Arthur Tugade. Okay? And then, these are the leading company, especially in airlines and cruise ships. So, the Philippine Airlines, the Cebu Pacific na mas kilala siya sa low-cost carrier, and then the Cathay Pacific, it is a, a, a an Hong Kong-based airline. Okay? And then, pag sinabi mo namang regional cruise, Star Cruise ang kilala, the leading cruise line in Asia. Pag sinabi mo namang Royal Caribbean, ito naman yung company na may mga malalaking mga ships, like Symphony of the Seas, and then the Harmony of the Seas, Allure, and Oasis. This ni Cruise Line naman, this is good for family, ano naman, family market. Kasi grabe ang market talaga niya, mga family. Uh, which is, uh, ang kanyang pinaka-port, sa Port Canaveral. And then, you're going to visit yung tinatawag na, uh, yung sa may um, Cast Away Key, sa may Cast Away Key, sa may, uh, yan, sa may uh, Bahamas. Ay, I'm sorry. All right. So, MS Symphony of the Sea, it is considered as the largest cruise ship as I said. Okay, grabe ang ganda nito. Uh, meron siyang uh, 18 decks, tapos mga makakapag-abili siya ng mga almost uh, 2,000 ma- ano, 2,000 plus na pasahero at ang daming mga amenities and facilities na meron diyan. Okay, and maybe in the future ganito na mga cruise ships natin, no? na talagang kala mo may mga buildings na kasi that's mga, kasi ngayon ng mga cruise ship that's considered as the floating hotel or floating resort malay niyo sunod floating building na okay or maybe get something like this itong 
yet island design na parang uh, abang maandar, napil na pil mo parang nasa resort, nasa floating resort, no? So, pwede kang mag-swimming dito sa swimming pool or kung gusto mo, mag-swimming ka na rin dito sa, diretso ka na dito sa karagatan. Okay? So, maganda tong style na to. So, that's still in the future trend of uh, regarding sa cruise. When ito about accommodation sector, quiet kasi pag-uusapan ngayon natin ang pag, ano naman, yung accommodation naman, no? So, alam nyo naman, syempre, as part of tourism industry, kailangan din ng isang ng isang uh, uh, turista na may pahingahan din once na he or she visited the destination. So, that's why may mga hotel, motel, partel, and resort. By the way, in the DOT accreditation, ang kailangan lang, nag- kailang mostly mostly requirement po or binibigyan ng accreditation mostly yung hotel, resort, and apartel. Pero yung mga mga budget hotel po, motel, inn, uh, or iba pang mga uh, iba pang accommodation na budget, that is considered as mabuhay accommodation. Okay? According to the ano yun, um, uh, what do you call this? Progressive accreditation system ng DOT. So, when you talk about accommodation, it provides lodging of tourists and it is a attra- attra- tourism attraction on its own because some of the accommodation sector, they are considered as parang naging attraction na. If you remember the Burj Al Arab in Dubai, so parang naging simbolo na. Naging simbolo na doon sa Dubai. Pero at accommodation lang talaga yon yung Burj Al Arab. And then, of course, one of the famous yan, uh, ito yung mga ilang famous na Five Star Hotel, which is Nobo Hotel. Okay, under yan ang City of Dreams, City of Dreams. Okay. Marami pang iba, may Manila Hotel, may Okada, Sofitel, so on. So those are five star hotel na mostly nananal sila sa mga awards for hotels such as yung ano, uh, they call this yung mga uh, uh, Forbes, uh, Forbes, uh, Forbes Award, mga ganun. Okay. And then, these are the famous hotel nga, sabi ko. And then, Resort de la Carmela de Boracay. Pag Marriott Hotel naman, kilalang-kilala sila sa napaka-quality ng hotel talaga. Grabe. Sabi mo, Marriott talaga. World class yan. Ito, pinaka, isa sa mga pinaka-largest hotel chain in the world. Or hotel uh, properties na may mala- maraming hotel properties in the world. Then, Manila Hotel, our hotel's uh, premier kasi located siya sa city, Manila, which is our capital. Okay? Napakaganda ng uh, Manila Hotel talaga. Okay, meron siyang pinaka pinaka room niya na tawag na pinaka MacArthur ano eh, parang name niya MacArthur uh MacArthur Suite, yun yung pinaka pinaka best room diyan sa Manila Hotel. And then kila tong Manila Hotel because mga different celebrities and mga different uh presidents or state president nakapag stay na sa Manila Hotel. Okay, so that's the best example of the rooms in Manila Hotel. Food and beverage sector, when you talk about food and beverage sector, it offers thematic as well as local and foreign gastronomy that attracts individual to try their cuisine. Okay, so it's all about food and beverage. So, papasok din yung mga different restaurants, fine dining, family, restaurants, um, casual restaurants. And then, pag beverage naman, mga different bars naman, yun ang bilong dyan. Okay, pati yung mga, ano, example yung mga destination, if they're offering mga delicacies that's still under food and beverage sector. So, something like this. This is fine dining restaurant. My sector, it's also continuing growing industry because when you talk about mice, it is composed of meeting, incentives, conferences, and, and events. Okay? So, pag sinabi mong uh, uh, meeting, it is the coming together of a number of people in one place to confer or carry out particular activity. So, so pupunta sa yung mga ano yung mga example yung mga isang mga different yung member ng isang organization mag pupunta sila sa isang uh, place para magkaroon ng particular meeting after that may parang seminar na rin and so on or para i-report yung or that ano yun yung annual uh, yung mga annual report nila may report ng sa isang organization mostly kasi mga nagme-meeting kasi mga members ng mga different organizations such as APEC, ASEAN 
or mga different organizations sa tourism. Nagme-meeting yan, yung mga member, that is called general membership meeting. Kaya din nagkaroon ng ano, yung annual report o and may seminar na rin. Incentive, ito sa meeting event as part of program which is offered to each participant to reward a previous performance. So especially, ginagawa ito ng mga company na nagkakaroon sa ng mga award ceremony para mabigyan naman, mabigyan naman ng mga reward or award yung mga employees na ng mga magagaling talaga or mga mga empleyado nila na mahuhusay talaga magtrabaho. So you like employee of the year, so on. Or pwede rin yung mga different award ceremony such as yung mga Metro Manila Film Festival, ano pa, lahat, lahat, basta it's all about award ceremony. That's all about incentive. Okay? Or mga travel incentive, pasok din doon. Conference, a participatory meeting designed for discussion, fact-finding problems, solving and consultation. So, papasok din dito yung convention. A business, a professional meeting usually attended by a large number of people. So, dito, um, yung mga yung mga delegates or mga attendees atin sila para magkaroon ng uh, i-discuss na topic meron sil merong merong guest speaker or merong speaker na magdi-discuss tapos or they're going to have a, a consultation or parang fact finding problem solving at doon nila sasagutin so minsan may may tinatanggap na international conference such as sa UNWTO, minsan mga local conferences, regional conferences and so on. Okay? Okay, and then uh, when you talk about exhibition, these are events at which products and services are displayed. So katulad po ng mga travel trade expo, mga 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 different business trade, yung mga car shows, ano pa ba yung mga product displays? Okay, yung mga nag uh, it's all uh, yung mga uh, B2B or business to, to business uh, trans ano uh, trade transactions. Okay, yan ay part ng exhibitions. So, yan. Kumbaga they're displaying yung kanilang mga products or mga business and so on. So katulad ng uh, ito, yung 27 PTA Travel and Tour Expo. That's the best example of uh, ito, yung exhibition. Yan. So, may mga different uh, companies such as Philippine Airlines. May mga different, yung mga different, um, uh, mga different sectors sa ibang bansa. So, they're displaying their destinations there, yung mga pictures and so on para may promote. This is the best uh, the best event para may promote din yung mga destinations and yung mga different sectors in tourism. Now, so the Philippine Travel Mart ng Piltowa naman or Philippine Tour Operators Association. So ayan, so they're showcasing naman yung mga Philippine destinations such as yung mga different regional uh, mga different regions they are displaying their pra tourism products as well as mga attractions in the form of picture or mga produkto mismo pinapakita nila sa mga attendees niya. So, para may promote yung mga different destinations here in the country. So, tourism industry is a transformation agent. Employment will be generated from the increasing number of tourism sector brought up by the increase of international arrivals. So, yun naman talaga malalaman mo naman na ang isang tur ang tourism sector nag-growth. No? Because of the international arrivals. And of course, nag-generate ito ng income and also nagpo-provide ng employment. Because of the highest number of international arrival, nabibigyan na maraming trabaho, ang especially mga residents. So, also, the tourism has the positive impact on the environment because once na nagkaroon ng tourism, nagkakaroon po ng income. So, those income, yung ibang income po, pwedeng makatulong po para ma-sustain ang environment to avoid yung mga negative impacts such as pollution and so on, para ma-preserve or papasok natin dyan yung tinatag na sustainable tourism. The sector also provides linkages to other sectors as well. So that's very important. So nagkakaroon ng mga negotiation or partners with the other sector na kailang, para mas mag-growth pa yung industry ng tourism. And also the multiplier effects experience on the other industry like handicrafts, agriculture, fisheries, and transport. So lahat yan, because of the multiplier effect, lahat sila nadadamay sa ganda ng tourism. Okay, that's called uh, sustainable economic development. So, naaambunan uh, din yung ibang 
sectors because of tourism. Tourism as an experience economy. So according to Pine and Hillmore, the concept of the experience economy can help organization design customer focus company that manages the intangibles while focusing on revenues and profit. This can be achieved using the four E's of consumer experience. So ano-ano ba yung mga four E's of consumer experience? So number one, education. Because ang highlight po nito, yung a person interest to learn something new. You're traveling in the destination to learn something new. Because example, dun sa Incheon International Airport, ah uh, yung mga travelers, tinatry nila yung mga traditional costume or mga musical instrument doon bago sila uh, while waiting for the flights. Habang naghihintay sila umalis or naghihintay nila lumipad, so meron pang, pang may nagsishowcase doon ng mga costumes, traditional costumes, musical instrument, para ma-experience. Kasi maganda yung lear- ang experience sa best learning and best teacher. Okay? So, marami pang iba uh, for education. So, example, visitors aboard the cruise are treated to cooking way by the ship. Sa example, pag so makai ka ng cruise, cruise ship, so may mga ano doon, may mga nagde-demo ng mga chef, so maganda sa mga mahilig magluto. Or example, you're going to visit a vineyard, lalo na that's a wine tourism destination, especially sa France, sa Spain. So you're going, yung mga vineyard owners doon, nagkakaroon sila ng mga teaching about wine making and offer wine tasting, so or wine appreciation. Local guides, talk about this trip their community so that's also a part of learning experience no yung mga different sa mga different destination mga local tour guides nagdi-discuss sila ng history mga activities sa destination that's also a best way for education or educating uh, tourists scientists join expedition tours to share their expertise on specific topics lalo na sa mga pumupunta sa mga uh, sa mga different science museum magandang maganda yan Entertainment naman, of course, tayo mga tourists, so once we visiting a destination, gusto natin na entertain tayo. We love to watch live performances, like yung mga banda, pop rock concerts, orchestra musical, because ang entertainment po, it's also an attraction, nagiging attraction. Diba? Minsan dahil sa mga, ano na yan, yung mga artista na bumibisa sa isang destination, maraming pumupunta doon, dahil nga, Idol sila, idol nila yun eh. Okay? Under one, yung mga nag-orchestra, mga nag musical theater, mga nag circus lahat yan under yan ng entertainment. Ngayon, integrated resort not only provide gambling facilities, but mount large-scale show as well. Example, if you're entering the the, the casino, especially dyan sa Okada or sa sa Resorts World or sa, so, uh, sa may City of Dreams, doon sa gitna niyan, may mga may bar diyan na may nagpe-paper from at meron din stage talaga doon na may mga nagkakanta habang naglalaro ka. Okay, para may entertain yung mga gamblers para syempre lalo na pag natatalo ka na may nakikit may naririnig ka magandang music. Nakakabawas ng lungkot at stress yun lalo na sa mga natatalo. Ewan ko lang, pero kasi minsan nakaka-good vibes yung music eh. Okay, aesthetic naman po, uh, minsan po, nakakaakit po para sa mga turista yung ganda mismo nung lugar, yung ambience po. Yung ambience, yung interior decoration, yung furniture, fixture, yung natural event, and even the look, the personal effect, the consumer expectation. Kasi po, yan yung tinatawag na service environment. Siyempre, hindi lang naman tayo papasok sa isang hotel or restaurant. Gusto na, kaya naman tayo pumapamunta doon. Because mayroong, magand- mayroong kakaiba doon, may uniqueness, something like that. May magandang ambience, may kakaibang design. Kasi nakaka ng turista yan. Okay, mahilig sila. Alam naman tayo, mahilig tayo mag-ano, mag-selfie. Uh, okay, mahilig tayo mag-picture-picture kung saan-saan. Lalo na dyan sa Okada, maraming magandang ambience dyan. So, that's part of aesthetics. In addition, the ambience impacts your overall experience. According to the Random House Dictionary, defines ambience as the moods, special quality, or atmosphere of a place or an environment. Because of the great ambience po, nakakatanggal po ng stress, nakakatanggal po ng lungkot. Diba? Yung mood ng papaganda ng mood, lalo na kung maganda isang environment, parang nakaka-relax, nakaka-pamper ng isipan. That's aesthetic. Last one, escapees. Traveling is one sure to get away from the stress, boredom, and the hassle of bustle of daily life. 
gusto natin pagpunta sa destination dahil gusto natin ma-escape sa ating mga trabaho, sa ating pag-aaral. Parang gusto naman nating ma-relax sa mga utak natin, mawala tayo sa reality, sa real world. Gusto natin pumunta tayo parang ma-relax, mawala yung stress natin para magkaroon man lang ng uh, break sa trabaho. So maganda kasi yun, class. Kasi pag nakakapag-break ka sa trabaho, nakakapag-vacation ka, kapag relax ka na, escape sa work, nagiging mas productive ka, mas gagaling ka. Kasi nakapagpahinga yung utak mo, yung yung spiritual mo, yung basta everything about you, physical mo, nakapag-recreation ka, nakapag-recreate ka, nakapag-refresh ka. That's the best way. So that's why, a report from the CLA, CLIA or Cruise Line International Association I was the tourists are motivated to take cruises because they want to visit several different locations while being pampered because yan lang naman talaga yung product or the cruise ships aside kasi na, na sumasakay ka doon sa ship na yan doon mismo marami mga facilities and amenities na pwedeng ma-enjoy ng, ng cruisers grabe pwedeng kang doon pa lang talaga sulit ka na tapos napapampered ka pa tapos bumibisita ka pa sa mga different attraction o yung tinatag na mga poor of calls para magkaroon ka doon ng shore excursion. So doon pa lang, once na nakasakay ka doon, wala kang iisipin problema eh. Parang enjoy ka lang ng enjoy. Kain ka lang ng kain, enjoy ka lang ng enjoy. Yun yung escape ka talaga sa trabaho mo talagang. Makakalimutan mo yung problema mo or yung lungkot mo or yung trabaho mo talaga. Mas nagiging productive ka, mas nagiging uh, confidence ka after mo bumalik sa real world. So that's it. That's it actually. So this is all about tourism sector under ito ng overview of tourism. So if you have some question, just comment below na lang. If you have some questions. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. Uh, Jade Portis Pulumbarit. So ayun. So I hope you will learn a lot. I hope you learn a lot. Sorry. <laughs> I hope you learn a lot uh, in this lecture about tourism sector. Tandaan, ang tourism sector is composed of public sectors such as the government and then the private. These are business sectors such as yung mga accommodation sector, transportation, the travel trade, entertainment sector, my sector, and marami pang iba. Okay? Na kailang, kailangan po sa pagpapaulad na isang sa industry ng tourism. Yan ang katulong public and private sectors. So, for the growth of tourism in both economic for the positive impacts of environment as well as social cultural. So, that's all. So, thank you for watching my blog and don't forget to subscribe my channel.